According to the French-Algerian existentialist Albert Camus, the absurd is a defining theme of our lives. What he calls the absurd is the conflict that we experience when looking for meaning. We have this urge, this burning desire to derive meaning from the tiniest actions that we do. But we especially crave understanding and purpose when it comes to our lives at large. We simply want to know what we are doing makes sense, is useful and maybe even serves a higher purpose. Our desire to discover the meaning of life clashes with the bitter and brutal reality that we experience, which seems random, cruel and meaningless. We may feel excellent about our accomplishments, we feel proud and we truly believe that we made an impact. But if we are turning our delusions of grandeur off for just a second, then we realize how insignificant we truly are. Even if we just look at a time span of a hundred years, which is judged by the age of Earth itself only a fraction, then we quickly realize that no one will care about our achievement. Nobody will give a damn about the good grade that we received, the discovery that we made, or the effort that we poured into a project. Nobody will care about how hard we worked on quitting the nasty habit of smoking or playing video games. Nobody will give a damn what we did at all. This inherent meaninglessness of our existence may even be visible in shorter time spans like 50 years when our childhood friends forget us or when our teachers had many more excellent students after us. But the meaninglessness will definitely shine through when we look at a larger time frame, since our Earth will eventually be destroyed and everything will be for nothing. And even in the here and now, there are billions of people that couldn't care less about us. This might be an uncomfortable and discouraging realization. And that's probably one of the reasons why we never really think about it. Sure, factually, we know that we are just one individual in the greater timeline. But we never really contemplate that idea, because it can be scary. Another way of thinking about the futility of our lives is the repetitiveness that we experience. And this might be a cruel awakening, but everything you do or experience is some sort of repetition. You proceed through the same weeks from Monday to Sunday with work and relaxation in between. You have enjoyable evenings with friends, romantic nights with a significant other. You finish projects at work, you earn achievements and win competitions. But the chance is rather high that you experienced something similar before. You've had good evenings before, you won competitions, you probably even graduated multiple times when we look at all the schooling that you went through since elementary school. Your life is moving in circles, or life in general is moving in circles. You could say that Corona is a rare thing that does not repeat, but if you look at the Spanish flu, the Black Death, or even the Antonin Plague that took place during the reign of the Stoic Emperor Marcus Aurelius, then you might realize that even plagues have been around for quite some time. You might realize that you are not so special after all. But the really important lesson is not that repetition and meaninglessness is necessarily a cruel fate. What makes it so disconcerting is our ability to realize it, our awareness of our own actions, our ability to reflect on this repetitiveness. Take a look at the animal kingdom, it does not get any more repetitive than that. Most of an animal actions are summarized by resting, reproducing and refueling. It's incredibly repetitive, but animals don't seem to mind. Our curse of consciousness makes us realize how futile all of this is. Sure, we can tell ourselves that it serves a higher purpose and that it helps the common good. But how meaningful is that really if humanity will eventually go extinct? The absurd, the conflict between our desire for meaning and our random and meaningless existence prevails. Now, there are two ways to deal with the absurd. The quite negative one is philosophical suicide or suicide in general. And then there is an approach that seems a lot more positive. But we'll discuss that in the next video on Albert Camus. Until then, a huge shout out to Elise, David Rose and Robert Kempf for continuously supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate it.